That's, that should be the opening of the poem, man. How do I look, dude? Yeah, I'm a first year graduate student and I did my undergrad at the University of Alabama. But the current professor is um, a guy named Tim Feeney, great guy. Um, so the third construction by John Cage is it's a really interesting piece uh, to begin with, but really it's, it's just one of the first major like percussion only kind of like small chamber um, pieces that we have that was just very in influential. <laughs> Rehearsing third construction is really interesting um, because we all play various different instruments. Like I'll play this or some tin cans and Taylor, Daniel, Ricky will be playing a drum or lion's roar or some like cricket collar thing. Uh, and those are tricky to just balance and mesh together because they don't necessarily sound the same at all. So a big thing is like all these different colors have to mesh and sound together as a unit, however, be distinctly different. And that's just something that we plan for and it's just been really fun and nice experience to pick our instruments, get to know our instruments, have a good feel for our instruments and mesh it well as an ensemble. Playing percussion chamber music is cool because a lot of the things we do are so physical and we get to move around. Like I'm never standing in the same spot for more than a few minutes or a minute or 30 seconds because I walk up here and shake a maraca. I have to go up here and do a ratchet or a lion's roar. And so it's very active and it's fun working with the people and looking at Daniel or James or Taylor and seeing what they can do. You know what they say about conch shells? You can hear the ocean, can you hear it? Can you hear it? <laughs> you know, a lot of people have preconceived notions about Cage. They think, oh, he wrote that that silent piano piece, four minutes and 33 seconds. Ha ha, that's not music. I think it's important to not let preconceived notions of music get in the way of actually experiencing and enjoying a, a compositional output of a composer like Cage. This piece is visceral, it's, it's intimate, it has a lot of really great moments in it, and people need to realize that like, we're not just up there making stuff up. Um, you know, this, he wrote it down and it was very thoughtful, as James mentioned. Uh, so I think it's gonna be a really enjoyable experience. Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. It's just reading. I read books. Anyways, you were asking about John Cage's, you know, third construction. And that's a good one. You wanna know why that's a good one? Cause I'm playing it. With those dudes back there, you see them doing all the weird stuff? We're playing that piece. So, uh, John Cage's third construction is a very important piece, historically, as um, James talked about. Uh, but it's also unique uh, in its context and also still unique today, um, nearly a hundred years old. When Cage wrote it, I think he was rebelling against this idea of uh, melody and harmony that were the typical forms of composition and he wanted to create rhythmic harmony and melody. Um, and he did that. He did it you know, amazingly well. That's why we still play third construction. Um, and so we have these moments where it's actively like a ruckus that happens where we have these nines and sevens against eighth notes, or it's just like these great polyrhythmic moments, um, and then, but these moments also are mirrored by these beautiful and sweet melodies, and there's like one point where Ricky and I trade off this clave melody, and it's like very, very nice, and it's beautiful, um, and so I think he was aware of how to utilize percussion well to still create these 
melodies that people can relate to. If that doesn't sell you on it, then I don't, I don't know what will. So 